In the far northwest corner of the country, snow-crowned peaks of Washington's Olympic Mountains launch a chorus of streams and tributaries. They assemble into a river called the Elwha. Falling to the Strait of Juan de Fuca and the Pacific Ocean. 87% of the river is in the Olympic National Park, so it's one of the most protected rivers uh, in the United States. For settlers, these wilderness waters held the promise of a better life. Well, when we look back 100 years ago, this really still was a frontier. I mean, this was really a chartered territory out here, so there was a lot of opportunity to build a dam and a power plant. Thomas Aldwell's plan to harness the Elwha River and generate electricity was received with great enthusiasm in the community. Workers completed the Elwha Dam in 1913. Glines Canyon Dam, 21 stories high, followed in 1927. The monumental accomplishment of building uh, not only the lower dam here, but the upper dam as well, is really an incredible feat. They not only had the adversity and challenges of old technology, but they had in climate weather, the roads and access down into here were very difficult, and they had to uh, take an incredible risk to build this project. A system that fueled economic growth here a century ago now produces only a small fraction of the region's electricity needs. When you take a 1913 power plant with the uniqueness of all of its manual operation, there's nothing really automated here. It definitely has its own personality. And you get to understand, after you operate for some time, the little things that you have to listen for. Just below the powerhouse, the river hosts another kind of enterprise. We watch the salmon, they struggle, they come up to the base of the dam and power plant down there, and uh, they want to come upstream, and they want to do what they were designed to do. And you can literally see them try and get past Elwha Dam, trying to get upstream to spawn where they historically used to go. The dams prevent salmon from reaching 90% of their habitats in the Elwha. For millennia, these salmon sustained a culture. I wouldn't even be sitting here today if it wasn't for the fish because uh, during the hard times we always had to rely on the river. The king salmon was, uh, I don't know how tall I was, but it was just as tall as me. <laughs> The creation site of Clallam people is on the Elwha River. It's about five miles upstream, just past the lower dam. This sacred river produced 400,000 salmon a year, and now fewer than 3,000. We want our damned salmon back, D-A-M-M-E-D. -M -M -E we want the salmon that have been dammed back in the river again. The cost of keeping the dams has cast a shadow over their benefits. We are going to have to spend a tremendous amount of money. We are going to have to provide fish passage, which is extremely expensive. The, the machinery was going to have to be replaced or extensively rebuilt. You come to the realization, we can't afford this for the size of these projects. In 1992, an act of Congress provided for the restoration of a free-running river. This is the largest dam removal effort to date in the United States or elsewhere. Led by the National Park Service, crews will dismantle the dams in a two and a half year process. Up to 15 million cubic yards of silt, sand and gravel trapped in reservoirs behind them will move downstream to rebuild salmon habitats beaches, and the estuary. In time, you won't even know a dam was here. You're going to have bears, otter, eagles all along the watershed, all along the, the riverside, all because the salmon came back. 
our hopes are that our grandkids can see the same Alwa River that our grandparents saw.